Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Baker's Cysts. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash Baker's Cyst or in the orthopedic surgery section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Baker's cysts are also called popliteal cysts. A Baker's cyst is a fluid-filled sac in the popliteal fossa, causing a lump or swelling at the back of the knee. The popliteal fossa is the diamond-shaped hollow area at the back of the knee that's formed by four structures. The semimembranosus and semitendinosus tendons form the superior medial border. The biceps femoris tendon forms the superior lateral border. The medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle forms the inferior medial border. And the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle forms the inferior lateral border. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. In adults, Baker's cysts are usually secondary to degenerative changes or wear and tear in the knee joint. They can be associated with meniscal tears, which is an important underlying cause, osteoarthritis, other knee injuries, and inflammatory arthritis, for example, rheumatoid arthritis. Baker's cysts are formed by synovial fluid squeezed out of the knee joint and collecting in the popliteal fossa. A connection between the synovial fluid in the joint and the Baker's cyst can remain, which allows the cyst to continue enlarging as more fluid collects there. Baker's cysts are contained within the soft tissues and they don't have their own epithelial lining which is an important feature when it comes to management because it's not possible to remove the entire cyst because it doesn't have its own lining. Let's talk about the presentation. Patients may present with symptoms localised to the popliteal fossa with pain or discomfort, fullness at the back of the knee, pressure, a palpable lump or swelling and restricted range of motion in the knee when there's a larger cyst. On examination, the lump will be most apparent when the patient stands with their knees fully extended. The lump will get smaller or disappear when the knee is flexed to 45 degrees and this is referred to as Foucher's sign. Edema may occur if the cyst compresses the venous drainage of the leg. Let's talk about a ruptured Baker's cyst. Baker's cyst can rupture if the pressure is large enough. A ruptured Baker's cyst will cause inflammation in the surrounding tissues and the calf muscle, presenting with pain, swelling and erythema or redness. A critical differential diagnosis of a ruptured Baker's cyst is a deep vein thrombosis or DVT. A ruptured Baker's cyst can rarely cause compartment syndrome. Let's talk about the differential diagnoses. The key differential diagnoses of a lump in the popliteal fossa are a deep vein thrombosis, an abscess, a popliteal artery aneurysm, a ganglion cyst, a lipoma, varicose veins, or even a tumour. Next, let's talk about the investigations. Ultrasound is the usual first-line investigation to confirm the diagnosis. Ultrasound can also be used to rule out a deep vein thrombosis. An MRI scan can be used to evaluate the cyst further if required, for example, before surgery. They can also demonstrate underlying knee pathology, such as a meniscal tear. Finally, let's talk about management. If the Baker's cyst is not causing any symptoms or problems, then no treatment is required. Non-surgical management for symptomatic Baker's cysts include modifying activity to avoid exacerbating symptoms, analgesia, for example NSAIDs, physiotherapy, ultrasound-guided aspiration of the cyst to suck out the fluid, and steroid injections. Surgical management typically involves arthroscopic procedures 
inserting a camera into the knee to treat underlying knee pathology that's contributing to the cyst, for example, degenerative changes or meniscal tears. Resection of the cyst is difficult and the cyst is likely to reoccur, particularly when other knee pathology is present. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.